Hello everyone! In this video, let us talk about data collection and presentation. Without further ado, let's get this lesson started. Data collection methods and tools, of course, when we are talking about statistics, we are all dealing with data, data set, no, the numbers that needs to be interpreted. We cannot interpret something that we have not yet collected. So the following are the different data and the methods and tools on how we can collect them. When we talk about primary data based on the previous video that I have presented, Primary data refers to the data that the researchers collected themselves. These are authentic, first-hand data. And on the other hand, we have secondary data. These are data that came from other researchers. It may be from published or unpublished materials. When we are dealing with primary data, the following are the methods and the tools that we can use to collect them. First is by direct experiment. See, for example, we have different setup in laboratories or in classroom, and we are observing and taking down notes of the different results or behavior of the things that we are experimenting. So what we can use as a tool in experiment are the experiment logs or the observation logs. Another method of collecting primary data is through interview. It can be over the phone or through video conferencing or face-to-face -face interview. And a tool can be the interview guide. When we say interview guide, it is an outline of the topic that you will be discussing with your interviewee. It may contain questions or just simple topics that will be the flow of the interview. Next, we have survey. This is more of the self-administered questionnaires. It can be in a form of checklist or rating scales, which you will distribute to your respondents to get their perception or to get data from them. Observation. Say, for example, you are seated and immersed in a certain setting and you want to observe how the different people interact with each other so you can provide a checklist and you will just put a check on the things that you have noticed and the most simple way of collecting primary data is through registration for example you just want to know how many students attended the synchronous class so you can generate an attendance sheet or a registration sheet at the end or before the activity or before the class next secondary data as i mentioned a while ago these are the data that the other researchers collected so when you are going to borrow these data you have to search no published and unpublished materials and you have to observe proper citation to give credit to the original owner of the data data gathered are raw data they are not yet ready to be presented to the audience so you have to be familiar with the different ways of presenting data first and I think the very simple is the textual presentation. From the word itself, textual, it is presenting the data using paragraphs. Narration. You are narrating the data gathered from the respondents or the participants. So for example, here, in a class of 40 students, 5 of them obtained the perfect score of 50 in their third quarter long test in statistics. 18 students got a score of at least 40, while 2 students scored 19 and below. Generally, the students performed well in the test with 30 or 75 of them obtaining a passing score of at least 38. So that is one good way to present the data. There are also other ways like tabular form from the word itself, table, or frequency distribution table, FDT. When we talk about FDT, this is organizing raw data in table using different classes and frequencies. When we say classes, it can be qualitative or categorical like city or country where a person lives and when we say frequency it is the number of data that is corresponding to a certain class the count of the data corresponding to the certain class 
So the following are the common parts of statistical tables. First part is the table number and title. When we say title, it is a short phrase that describes what the table is all about. And this part is found above the table. Column header, it talks about the label of each column. What does each column represent? Row header is the label per row. What is that row referring to? And of course, the body. The body itself is the intersection of a certain row and a certain column that contains the data. We have different FDT depending upon the nature of the data. When we have a categorical or nominal or qualitative data, something like this. Now, 10 students were asked regarding their comfort food and the data below are their answers. We are tasked to find the frequency distribution for the data. So what we can do to create the FDT for this is we will just list down the different comfort food that will take up the first column. This is the column header for the first column, comfort food. And the entries on the first column will serve as the row header. So we just list down all the possible answers. And for the frequency, we just count how many students answered that comfort food. So for ice cream, we have four. That's why we have four here. French fries, we have two. Donut, we have one. And milk tea, we have three. So at the end of the table, of course, we put the total 10 students. And as you may notice, the table also contains the number and the title, which is found above it. That is how a qualitative or categorical or nominal frequency distribution table looks like. Of course, we know that aside from qualitative data, we also have quantitative uh, data. So in order to construct the FDT of quantitative data, I have made a separate video and you can access it here in the upper right corner. You just click on this link. I made a separate video about that because it has certain steps that you need to follow. The third method of presenting data is the graphical method. When we talk about graphs, these are visual representations that helps the audience or the viewers understand the data at a single glance. So at first look, they can get the overview of the data. Is the data increasing or decreasing over time? Is the data divided into different subparts? Those are the important key points that the data set may have and can be highlighted by graphical representation. First, we have the histogram. Histogram is generated from quantitative frequency distribution table, the one that has different class boundaries. So for example, let's have an excerpt of that FDT, quantitative FDT. Let us just take the columns that we need, which are the class boundaries and the frequency. Let's make a histogram for this. So this is actually the distribution for the viewers ages. So you may notice we prepare this blank graph. For the y-axis, we have the frequencies. And for the x-axis, we have the boundaries. We just write here the possible values found in the class boundaries. First is 19.5 to 29.5, that is 8. So we can draw a rectangle from 19.5 until 29.5 and its height should be 8 because that corresponds to the frequency of that class. For the next class, which is 29.5 until 39.5, its frequency is 9. That's why its height should be 9. For the next class, 39.5 until 49.5, its frequency is 6. That's why its height is until 6. And finally, we have 2. As the frequency or the height for 49.5 to 59.5. So the following are the things that you have to take note when dealing with histogram. First, 
the histogram does not touch zero. The leftmost part or leftmost line of the histogram should not touch the frequencies or the y-axis because it will always start with the lower class bounded here. Second, the histogram shows a continuous flow of data or in other words, there are no gaps between the rectangles. Again, let me repeat that. For histogram, there should be no gaps between the rectangles because as you can see on the class boundaries, the data is also continuous. The first class ends with 29.5 and the second class starts with 29.5. So it seems like the ending point of the first class is the starting point of the next one. So that is for the histogram. It's quite similar to bar graph. However, bar graph is dealing with categorical or qualitative FTT. Unlike in the histogram, it deals with quantitative FTT. Since bar graph is derived from qualitative or categorical FTT, as you may notice, we have here the bars that has gaps between them. Yes, bar graph allows gaps between the rectangles because these are not continuous data. Different bars refers to different categories. Bar graph can either be vertically oriented like this one, frequency of comfort food. It can also be horizontally oriented just like the bar graph on the right the first quarter sales by salesperson in U.S. dollars. Depending upon what is more appropriate with the data set, you can either use the horizontal or the vertical bar graph. Of course, when we are dealing with vertical bar graph, the y-axis are the frequencies and the x-axis are the different categories. The axis will be switched if we are dealing with a horizontal bar graph, the y-axis will now be the categories and the x-axis will now be the sales or the frequency. Another type of graphical data presentation is line graph or time series. Just like histogram, line graph does not touch any number on the y-axis or the zero part because it starts with the first entry which is the year. Also, line graph talks about the trend of data over time, how the different values behave over time. When you are presented with a time series or line graph, the following are the things that you have to look. First, look for trends or pattern. Is the line decreasing or increasing? Well, of course, it has something to do with the behavior of the data. If the line is decreasing, meaning the data is also decreasing. Or if the line is rising to the right, then the data is also increasing. Another thing that you have to take note is the slope of the line or the steepness of the line. A steep slope talks about a rapid decrease or increase of the data set. Just like what you can see in this line graph or time series, from 2016 to 2017, it's decreasing but not that rapid because the slope is not that steep. There was a rapid decrease from 2017 to 2018. Then it again increased from 2018 to 2019 and there was also a sudden drop of enrollees from 2019 to 2020. So again, for line graph or time series, look for pattern and take note of the slope of the line. Finally, we have pie graph. Pie graph talks about the components and how they make up the whole like what we can see in this pie graph. So 30% of the students shows milk tea as the comfort food, 40% shows ice cream, 
uh, 20% shows french fries and 10% shows donut. So always remember that pie graph is used if the data can be divided into different subparts. For example, the allocation of allowance of a certain student. How much does he allocate for food? How much does he allocate for mobile plan? For transportation? Another pie graph can be about the components of sales of a certain business. How much of the sales came from a certain business? How much came from investment? And so on. So those are the different ways on how we can present data. We have textual, which is used more for narratives. We have tabular, if we need to look at key points that needs to be reported as well. And third presentation is the graphical method, which is more audience friendly because the viewers can understand the data at a single glance.